Eric, what do we got? I know you you look like a dog in heat back there. You got questions coming yeah, we through. we got a lot of questions coming in. Right, I like hit, this one, though. Hit us. What do we got? We've all seen all the massive fish that you've caught on this bait. What's the smallest bass that you've ever caught on wow. one of these swim, swim baits? And how often are you catching smaller sized fish? Because I think that's a lot of times guys that are trying to get into the big swim bait game, that's their concern. It's like, I'm not going to get any bites. You know, I'm not going to see enough action throughout the day. Right. You know, I caught a lot of big fish on it. Uh, small fish too. You know, I catch two and three pound fish on it all the time. I'd probably say that, you know, I, my client caught one this year. Uh, it was an eight inch baby catfish. It was this big, wow. right through the lip on a 68 Huddleston. And so size of fish doesn't matter. You know, what those fish were doing during winter is they're, they're being real territorial about their zone. And so matter if it's a, it doesn't matter if it's a two-pound fish or a 10-pound fish. Uh, they're going to come up and eat that thing to get it out of their zone, even if they're not feeding on it. But small fish, big fish, I've caught a lot of small fish on it. You know, don't be discouraged. You will still get bites. Good question. What else we got, Eric? If you could only fish one swim bait, one, what would it be? Wow. Ooh. That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Swim bait, glide Man. bait? You know, I, I'd probably have to go with, with Old Faithful and, and the Huddleston Deluxe. You know, it, it imitates a shad. It imitates a carp, a catfish, uh, a crappie. It imitates everything so well by its natural swimming action that I would, I would be hard-pressed to tie anything on even at a new lake before I tied a Huddleston on it, and that would be the one I couldn't go without. Yeah, I, real quick, let me throw this before you get to the next question. I want to throw something out there. You just said something, and I'm going to give a huge insider tip to people that fish uh, Kentucky Barkley Lakes right now. Uh, for those of you watching that fish down there, you know that the Asian carp have gotten in there over the last three and four years. The word on the street is that the bass are going nuts right now for those immature, those those smaller Asian carp now that they're they're in there breeding, right. they're spreading, and you know the the immature uh, Asian carp are you know four, six, eight, ten inches, and they're going nuts for them. So they do eat carp too. So for oh. our, our Kentucky Lake fishermen, there's a hint for you. Well, what else? Yes, we got? do. What else we got, Eric? Does a low profile reel have a better advantage than a round conventional reel for you? Not at all. The reel has absolutely nothing to do with the performance of the bait while you're catching the fish. All the reel is doing is is my reel has a purpose, and all that is is for uh, line retrieve. I fish one that has a 6.3 to 1, and then I fish another one that is a 5.3 to 1, and that is a round reel. Um, really low profile, round reel, it doesn't matter. It's purely 100% personal preference. It's how what is comfortable in your hand um, as long as the ratio is correct for the bait. Now, I fish, you know, on a, on a big glide bait, on a big topwater walking bait, you know, I'm going to fish a 6.3 to 1 reel, something that gets to me that line back a little quicker. Uh, if I'm fishing a glide bait or a Huddleston down on the bottom or, or a top hook down on the bottom, I'm going to fish a, a 5.3 to 1 gear ratio to, to make me go a little bit slower. And that's really all the reel is used for in my eyes. It's, it's comfort in your hand and, and, and uh, line speed retrieve is all it is. Good one. How much does the rod action or setup change between hard and soft swim baits? You know, it, it really, it, it, it mainly it's on how heavy the bait is. Um, th that's what I'm judging on. I'm going to judge my rod based on how heavy the bait is and how fat the hook shank is. Now, I'm a big, you know, believer in, in, in hook shank penetration. Uh, just like, you know, David Dudley talks a lot about, you know, I, I don't want to use a wimpy rod when I'm throwing a crankbait. I, I want that hook to penetrate and I'll worry about losing them after I get that barb passed. And that's what I'm really looking for in my swim bait rod, is to make sure I've got enough tip or enough backbone on that rod to be able to penetrate hook. And and or if I'm if I'm using a, a treble hook bait, you know, I may back the rod tip off a little bit, not so stiff, so that I'm not pulling those fish off. But I, I really judge my rod on lure weight and, and size of the hook that I'm throwing. Gotcha. That, that's a good one. And uh, let me remind everybody, all these questions coming through, we're going to pick Brian DeCarpenter, a couple good ones out of this oh, yeah. lot. Yep, yep. And we've got great swim baits here that we're giving away. We've got, of course, the Huddlestons that we're talking about. We've got some Freddy Boom Boom uh, swim baits that we're giving away. And we're giving away these really cool new uh, Babe swim baits from Fishing for Five. We're going to be giving some of these away tonight. So keep your questions coming in. Eric, what else we got? 
Yeah, here's a good one, man. You got to take out a separate insurance policy for these small first of baits that you have. <laughs> <laughs> man. <laughs> it, it, w- it wouldn't be a bad idea. But uh, like I've said, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time. And, you know, the number one rule I think I've learned that I've taught myself of uh, throwing these big baits is you don't have to throw them very hard. Um, and, and that's a big thing of, of not casting baits off and, and, and being, you know, a little more – a little more easy with your cast. This bait, you know, it doesn't have to go a hundred feet, you know, out into the water for you to get a bite on it. So I've really learned, you know, I catch just as many fish with a three quarter cast as I do with a full cast. And that's going to save you a lot of baits and a lot of money, you know, and, and like I said, I've been really lucky on how many baits I've been able to save throughout the years and not lose. So, so no, I haven't needed an insurance policy <laughs> yet, but, and, and I don't plan on it. <laughs> so, so what's that look like when you cast off a hundred dollar swim bait ah! <laughs> yeah a little meltdown action yeah what's it sound yeah. like i'd like to see mike lose one well, i I, uh, I gotta tell you i gotta admit this uh when we were down there filming for that uh, uh big bait posse video year thousand years ago i actually um i had like kind of like a little override from throwing it and I went right. to cast that big Huddleston, and it hit the backlash, and the entire rod and reel flew out of my hands. <laughs> yep, and, and it I wasn't it. it wasn't mine. It was like a Loomis with this Shimano. It was like a thousand dollar combo or something, and it just flew right out of my hand. Luckily, we got it before it went to the bottom. But oh, it man. happens. It happens, man. It, it does, you know. And that 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 just goes back to show you, you know. The swim baits are heavier than the the line, you know, the rod, everything, everything matters. And as long as you got the right equipment and, and you're doing it three quarters of an effort, you know, let the rod do the work is the biggest thing. You know, let, let your rod throw the bait for you and you'll save a lot of energy and a lot of baits. 